Hi everyone, welcome to Inkscape tutorial number 8 on how to use interpolate tool. So interpolate basically means fills in the gaps between two paths. So I'll show you a few examples. I'll start with a circle tool, just draw a circle there. And I said it only works with paths and that's a shape. So I need to convert that to a path, so press Control shift c And to get a duplicate of that, it's Control d Just drag that over there. Now if we highlight both circles, so press Control shift click on them both. Then we go Extensions, Generate from Path, Interpolate, get a live preview of that. And you can see it's drawn a set of circles straight in between. So you can change the number of interpolation steps, so that's the number of well, circles in this case that it's drawing. So we go for 6. Just apply that, close. You can see that's a group of objects there. Put them back in place, undo that. So interplay, it doesn't have to be between two shapes the same. So I take this circle again, so get a duplicate of that. Just drag that down to there. Now we'll try for a triangle. So we get to take the star tool, polygon shape, corners three. And just make one about, yeah, that'll do. So the control shift C to convert it to a path, highlight them both, generate from path into plate, live preview, and there it is, changing the shape. So you've got interpolation method, you've got a choice between one and two. And that basically means the way the curve's drawn, take a look at that. Yeah, slightly different. I think interpolation method number two looks better though, so I'll keep with that. Right, and we've also got the exponent feature. So I'll draw two squares for this one. So convert it to a path, a duplicate of it, put it over here. So I'll highlight them both again, go to generate from path, interpolate. Live preview of that. Let's see what happens when we put an exponent in. So when you go down to minus figures, they will stack up against the right hand side. You do positive figures, they stack up against the left hand side. And you can vary that however you want it. Apply close. Alright, so we'll undo that and go for the next example of duplicate end paths. So I generate from path into play again. Right, let's put a few more of those so you can see the difference. Now when we hit duplicate end paths, you can see they just disappear behind the one on the right hand side. So it's over on above it, now it's below. Or right, you could change the fill colour, go for an entirely different fill colour if you wanted. So convert that to a path. Duplicate that. And we change the fill. So to get this box up, that's shift, control and F. Let's go for blue. So highlight them both again. We'll go for interplate style. Live preview. So you can see it changes the fill colour as it goes across there. Cool. So you could even go for a different fill colour and a different shape. So I go with circle to square, or square to circle. Let's go for, I don't know, what should we, colour should we have? How about yellow? Oops, got to convert them to paths first. Now that's a weird combination, isn't it? So 
lovely combination of shapes it's trying to produce. Oh well. The last example, we'll do irregular shaped gradients. So when we get a choice between two gradients, straight and radial, we can create a weird shaped gradient. So we'll take the pen tool, we'll just draw a little shape here. I'll do. <coughs> uh, what should we go for? Dark blue. Put a fairly thick stroke style on that, so four. So I get a duplicate of that. Let's move it up. I'm using the arrow keys there to move it straight upwards. And we'll take that for a nice lighter blue. When you highlight them both, use the interpolate tool on that. So it starts to vary the fill colour there. But we need a lot more interpolation steps for this. One, so 20. We can still see a bit of a gap there. So go even higher, say 25. Still a bit of a gap. We could have been a bit harder than that, so I think 35 for this example. Apply it, close. And there we are. We have an irregular shaped gradient. Well, so that concludes this tutorial on how to use the interplate tool. So please, thumbs up, like the video, and subscribe. I'll see you later.